Well, good afternoon, Michelle. Thank you very much for joining me for afternoon tea today. Thank you so much for having me. Apologies for my uh, dodgy voice today. I've got a little bit of laryngitis and apologies for being a bit late. It's uh, my week of holiday, so. <laughs> Don't worry about that and I hope you get better soon. So my first question to you is what was your ch childhood like? Oh, I had a lovely childhood. Um, I was one of the blessed ones. My parents were still married. Um, just lovely. I was very blessed. My dad was, it was the old fashioned 2.4 kids. Dad went off to work. Mum raised me and my brother. Um, it was just, I just remember it being fun and lovely. Um, mm. Full of love. Not much money, but full of love. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was so then, wasn't it? In a way that, yeah. you know. Um, and did you have any siblings? You obviously said yes. you had. Yeah, my uh, older brother, um, and he is the, uh, the the designer behind my brand. He's actually a, a top class graphic designer, so uh, helped me create um, the brand for my company. So yeah, he's my best friend. Brilliant. And did you enjoy school? Um, primary school, yes. I just remember that being fun. Secondary school, not so. Um, I went. We had an eleven plus. Um, back in the day and I went to a grammar school um, I'm quite bright but I didn't realise for later on in life I was dyslexic so um, I struggled massively and if you because it was a grammar school and quite sought after if you didn't if you weren't an A straight student they didn't want to know and I was very sporty so um, yes I enjoyed the camaraderie with the girls but education I, I'm sitting on the fence with that one. I wish I'd, I wish I could have my time over, but I just found some of the bits more difficult than others. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I'm a mixed bag on that one. I don't have bad memories of it, but I can't say it was a great experience. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, what was your favourite subject at school? Oh, sports. <laughs> oh. Any particular sport? All of them. I was that horrible child that when... Miss used to say, oh, we're going for a cross-country run. I'd be like, oh, how far? You know, <laughs> um, I was the captain of everything. Um, I used to love maths as well. So maths and sports were my, my thing. I'm messing around with the girls. <laughs> mm. uh -huh. And um, apart from the, um, the grammar at grammar school, did you have any other problems at school? I was mouthy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and my mum had always brought me up to um, respect my elders, but also question, not no. in a rude way, just ask why. And that didn't go down well in a strict school. And I was never rude, but if you question something, it was almost like, no, do as we say, not as we do. And I suppose I'm still a little bit like that now. I'll ask questions. Um, I, I class it as inquisitive and thoughtful. I think some people may call it obtuse and obnoxious, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. <laughs> and Excuse me. Were there any problems? Um, sorry, I've asked that one. Did you go on to further education? Um, I got, a, I knew I was strugg not struggling at school, but I wasn't that way inclined. Um, and I managed to get on our, one of these old YTS schemes back in the day, a youth training scheme mm. for the youngsters watching. And I got a really good apprenticeship at British Gas. Um, and at the time we, we did um, we did four days um, in the offices and then one day where you did your ONC and HNC. So I got right up to higher in business and finance. Um, so another four years of education. But it was a really good programme. You did three, was it three or six months now? I think it was three months in each main department mm. so you could find out your strengths and weaknesses and that was a really good experience they paid us well they trained us well they made us keep a higher education so yeah I was very blessed to get an apprenticeship scheme with them when I was 16 but still mm. kept my education going and um, A levels in university were, were not were not for me yeah um, but yeah I was very blessed so where did you go from there from British Gas, wow, well, um, yeah, I worked there, I found out I was really good in sales, um, but because I'd gone straight from school to British Gas, I felt I'd just moved from one institution to another, 
Um, I've always been very sporty and behind the scenes at the weekend I was getting qualified as an aerobics instructor just for my own personal development because I've, I've always used to sprint at a quite a high level but I had a bad injury when I was about 16 and a half uh, that stopped me doing trials for the UK and um, so I was always very sporty and um, so I thought well I'll get myself qualified as an instructor because that means then somebody can pay me to teach a class at the weekend rather than me paying <laughs> and then I realised actually I was quite good at it and then people started asking me could you be a personal trainer for me could you do this so I got myself a level two gym qualification and a level three personal training so I did that while I was working full time um, and then I was getting asked to do more and more work so my weekends I was literally working all weekends with clients and classes and most evenings and then it got to a point where I go do I stay with this job that's great and I've probably got really good potential I'd pension and all those wonderful things that used to come with jobs back in the day or this adventure so I went for the adventure <laughs> um, some people thought I was mad but I thought it was perfectly sensible and built up a really good personal training business um, so that's where I went from there using all my knowledge that I'd gained at British Gas which stood me in good stead um, from there I used to work really really long hours and um, you'd work very unsociable hours being a mm. personal trainer when I was a personal trainer it didn't have the kudos or the respect that personal trainers have now mm. um, and I kind of fell out of love with it a little bit um, and then one of my old contacts had got a new job in a sales team and said oh we've got this job do you fancy it so I thought mm. then I got to that crossroads again and went back into sales so <laughs> um, mm. So from there, I went and I did great with the sales, working normal nine to five hours. Um, me and my husband got married. Um, I was very young when I got married. Um, and then I fell pregnant while I had this really good job. Um, and I was very poorly. Um, and my husband said to me, they weren't very nice how they treated me. Um, and my husband just said, look, we're in a very fortunate position. Why don't you just leave work and, and be a stay at home mum till the kids are at school? So I did that and I did a little bit of, went back into my personal training because it worked around the children. And then when the kids got old back and I vowed I'd never work for a big company again just because of how I've been treated. So I then became a consultant doing what I did best, which was teaching people how to sell. Um, and then in the midst of all that, um, I discovered this thing called CBD and the sort of personal training and fitness education that I got and my study of, of, of health and well-being with my marketing all kind of came to one so I think yes it's a very long convoluted journey to get me to where I am today but they always say you always end up on the right path don't you so, mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah the fitness has always been in me and the marketing and sales has always been in me and then it's kind of pushed together with my love of health and wellness. Mm, good and um, has the pandemic affected your business? Well, I don't it? know any different. Don't know any different. <laughs> um, I, start, I started my business. I actually launched in November, December before the pandemic when we all never knew what, what a pandemic was and learned words like furlough. Um, so, yes, my business was a fledgling when the pandemic hit. So my business um, model that I had had to completely flip it around and change it on its head. So um, I don't know any different, um, but now coming out of lockdown, I've gone back to my old, um, I'm starting to implement my old business model. Um, and I think it stood me in good stead. I've learned loads of things that I never thought I was going to learn. Um, and my business has grown month on month, so I must be doing something right. So uh, I've been really happy, but I don't know any different. You, you, the challenge is thrown at you, and I think like us wonderful ladies do, we just uh, get on with it, don't we, really? That's it. <laughs> and... Um... Is there anything about your life journey, knowing what you know now, that you would change? Oh, God, that's a really good one. Um, no, because I think every, everything that happens to you, whether that's good or bad, makes you the person that you are. And yes, I've had some really dark times with my mental health and it, like we all have, we've all got a story, but without those really dark days, you don't appreciate the good days. You don't find that strength that you find when you're at the bottom of the pit. Um, so no, I, I'm very much a don't regret anything kind of girl. Um, mm. So no, I think, I think your life sends you on that path. And whether it's, I think we're sent on a journey and... and that journey takes us to where we need to be 
Um, so no, now I wouldn't change a thing. Maybe yeah. maybe a little bit of money and living on a beach, but you know, that'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> and how can any anyone on the broadcast help you or listening to the recording help you? Um, I'm always always looking to talk to people and educate myself about other things that are out there you know not just the products that I'm in I'm in health and wellness and I like to connect with other like-minded people where we can collaborate and work together um, whereas I love to I'm an old-fashioned networker it's about what I can give to others and how I can promote them so I'm always up for one-to-ones with people to learn about their business um, and see what, where I can help them with my network um, and just to learn really um so and yeah and if anybody wants to chat about cbd or sports on your girl <laughs> and if anybody needed any help how can they get in touch with you oh well thank you uh, karen it's very kind um my website is www.leaporganics.uk i have the same handle for facebook and on instagram and i'm michelle keogh on linkedin i'm always up for a chat and if you see any posts you know that you like just give me a like and share and send me a message and I'll, I'll love to return the favour. Mm. Has anybody got any questions for Michelle? Um, well, a, a question and just a comment, really. I think you've done really well. It's been amazing considering you started your newer business, you know, just before all this stuff that's going on. Um, so well done to you. <laughs> um, I just want to ask why CBD? What was it about CBD that kind of um, got you on this journey? What was Do you know, that's a really good question. Thank you, Suraj. Um, I've, I've always been not an anti-supplementer. I've always been go to food and nutrition first before you add supplements and make sure all the other ducks are in a row. So, you know, you're getting the right sleep and all the rest and only add the right supplements and at the right time. And I've always bashed, not bash supplements, that's wrong. Um, I think we're too quick to pick, pick things up and stick them down as because somebody promises the earth. Whereas people need to research and look at their life. So I've always tried to educate people about, you know, go to Mother Earth, eat whole foods, get a good night's sleep. Um, so when I discovered CBD, I surprised myself because I do take supplements, but only the select ones that are right for me and my body. Um, and for me, it was life-changing but it is not a standalone product. It's part of that whole, the whole thing. You know, I still eat well. I get my nutrition. And um, when I'm like this, I try and rest. That's why my hair's a mess because I was actually just chilling on the sofa, forgetting what time it was. And, um, you know, rest, do the exercise, but then have the right supplements. And for me, for my anxiety, it was life-changing. It was like the missing piece of the puzzle had slotted in, but I only added it into my, my own diet once I'd done the research and, and worked out it was right. And like with any supplement, you should come off it after six months to see if your body's reset and whether you still need that supplement. And that goes for any supplement you put in. Mm. Um, but yeah, um, I'm still an advocate of things like vitamin D, making sure you've got the right protein. Um, magnesium is fantastic. There's certain vitamins and minerals that we all need in our bodies. So I'm an advocate of quite a few other ones. But I've not created my own brand. Uh, this is just the one that stuck out for me. And I'd like to be a People say, why don't you sell other supplements? Be like, no, I'm a CBD expert. I'm not. Uh, I've got lots of people that I can signpost to and recommend, but no, I'm the CBD girl. So, but thank you. Thank you for the question, Suraj. I hope that answered it for you. Yeah, yeah. I think obviously I found the most people that speak to regarding CBD, there's two, two choices they make. CBD because they don't have enough, um, they won't take it because they think they can get high. Mm -hmm. That's one of them, yeah. Um, but th that's because they haven't done enough research. And then those that have taken it and done the research or found the right product for them, they will love it. So yeah. it's just knowing the difference. And you know, obviously education is really important. I so. think you're quite right. It's, that, was the, that was part of my journey when I discovered it about five years ago. What I discovered when I started my research, yes, it was good for me, but the quality of the product and the education that was out there felt wrong. And it felt like they, it was a bit smoke and mirrors mm. and people weren't being ethical. And it's it feels like the tide is turning now. Yeah. There are still a lot of people out there that aren't doing eth ethically. Me and you know that there are some really good companies out there and there are some not so good companies. Um, so I'm just trying to educate people as best I can and assure them that you know, I follow all the right legislation. There's been a, a new novel food license that's come out. Nobody's, I think, three people have had that signed off yet, but 
nonetheless straight into the TikTok um, MRHA follow all the legislation. It's just about making sure that the company is ethical and are not selling. They're educating you and letting you make an informed right. decision. So you're quite, you're quite yeah. right. So yeah. So yeah, but you've done really well. Okay. Thank you. That's really kind. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Yeah. Have you got a question, Monday? Yeah, Michelle. What is your What's your plans for the future? What are you? Have you got any group big plans or? Um, it's a strange one because the, the plan I had was I wanted to have a business that provided honest quality products at a fair price and I feel like I've achieved that and achieving it because I'm getting it out there um, and I wanted to fit my business in around my family I never wanted to be working 12 hour days seven days a week you know all that and actually I've achieved the monetary money that I put in my head of what would I like to earn each month to do that and I've done that and within my first year I broke even which I was really really it surpassed all of my expectations so in some respects I've hit some of those goals that I had I think what I'd like to do now is just make sure that um, I carry on on that right journey I stick to my ethics and, and beliefs um, without spreading myself too thin I actually got a really good opportunity to work with a big sporting event and it felt wrong, it felt right that, oh my God, this is amazing and what an opportunity, but I felt I'm gonna spread myself far too thin and not achieve anything, which is my goal was to have more time with my family. And I thought taking that opportunity may have given me the monetary reward, but it wouldn't have given me mm. the, the emotional reward that I wanted. So very picky and choosy who I work with that align. And I just think if you, if you stick to your ethics and beliefs, that the money side of it always follows um, mm. and because um, of my mental health was so important to me my family life was so important to me yeah I could slave away and make an extra x amount each year what's that going to do I ain't going to buy me holiday this year is it not going anywhere <laughs> so I've got a sore throat I've been in a damp tent in Wales so uh, <laughs> I, I think sometimes goals are should be a bigger scale than just money and I think um, but yeah, I think just finding the drum and maybe more people getting to know that hopefully I'm an ethical company and, and we trust and, and, and believe in me, that's, that, that would be amazing. I hope that's answered your question, Wendy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming today. Thank you very much for joining me for afternoon tea today, yeah, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you so much, Karen. And apologies again for being a bit late and sounding like Marge Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> However, I have been putting the CVD down and it's not quite worked with laryngitis yet, but I'm not at the doctor's, so all well. <laughs> <laughs>